Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well we've got another little animation for you today. We've got a text module here and as you can see it's sort of growing, feeding in and fading out. Once it gets to its full width it's going to stay there for a few seconds, let you read it and then it's going to fade back out again. Nice little effect, that's going to get people's attention pretty quickly. Really easy to do, we've got to do a bit of CSS coding for this today, don't let that put you off. As usual, any code I write, I'll put down below the video. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual build. Once enabled, I'm simply going to delete the row that we've got here and we'll start from scratch. I'm going to go to the wireframe mode to do this as we've got this animating at the moment. There's our little row. I'm going to trash it. Let's go back to desktop view. Okay, well I'm going to add a little row underneath this one. So I'm going to click on that row, hit the little green button. I'm going to put a single column in my row. Divi comes as standard with all the light grey modules here, plenty to build just about any site. The blue ones are from a great free plugin called Divi Supreme Modules Lite. We're not using that one today. I'm going to just use a text module for this. You can use whatever you want, but text seems to work rather well. And I'm going to pretty much leave it just like that. I will align that text in the middle. We've got all the defaults going on here. Obviously, you want to style yours how you wish. I'm simply going to go over to Design. And I'm going to pop my text in the middle. OK, so we just got a regular text module there inside of a row. I can close this down now. Let's go in our row and set it up. What we want to do is I want to take any padding top and bottom away from this row. So we've just got the module. As you can see, it's highlighted in the dark lines there. So I'll take the padding away top and bottom. Then I'm going to hide the overflow on the row because when we squash this little text module down, we don't want it spilling out of this row. So I'm going to give the row a fixed height and hide any overflow. So first things first, let's go into the row and take away that padding. Green tab for a row, blue for a section, dark for a module. I go into the row. I'm going to go over to my design and spacing. I'm going to take any that padding away top and bottom. I'm simply going to put a zero in there. Don't have to put the picks in, it'll put it there for you. And I'm going to do hit the chain so it'll do the opposite side, the bottom. But that's kind of tightened it up a little bit between the top module there. There's that little underline hover effect we did in our last video and the bottom. So I'm going to adjust that with, by giving it a bit of margin top and bottom. I'm simply going to put in 20 pixels top and do the chain. So we're pretty much back how we were, but we've got no padding either side of this text here. OK, the next thing I want to do is actually give this row a fixed height because I don't want it to grow. I don't want it to be any bigger than kind of it is now. So we still in the design tab. We can close up spacing, go into our sizing and I'm going to roll down. I'm going to give mine a height of, say, 75 pixels, I think is what I used before. Obviously, adjust yours for how you want. Now, if you're intending to use this on your tablet and mobile sites, you can set different heights here by hitting the little icon there. If you don't see it, just roll over a different one as you roll over this writing. This is common to all modules. These icons will appear. If there's a little mobile phone type icon there, you can click on it and you can set a different height for tablet and mobile there. I'm going to stick to the desktop version, but like I say, if you're using it across your devices here, you're going to want to change that. Great. So I'm going to leave that just as it is. And the next thing I want to do is when we squish this up, I don't want that text falling out and pushing our content below down. So I'm going to go over to the advanced. I'm going to go down to visibility. I'm going to set this to hidden, both horizontal and vertical. Great. So now we want to target it with some code to make it shrink and grow, a little animation. To do that, we need to give it a CSS ID or CSS class. I'm going to use a class for this today. Still in our advanced tab, we can close up the visibility. Here we have CSS ID and classes at the top. Let's give it a class. I'm going to call mine G text for growing text. You call yours what you want. 
it wants to be unique and also it wants to mean something to you really because if you see this in the inspector code you're going to kind of know what it is that's kind of my shorthand for growing text so we should be good to go here so if I save this we'll save the page changes we can now exit the visual builder Okay, and CSS code, we're gonna write in our additional CSS panel. To do that, go down to your dashboard. Once at your dashboard, go down to appearance, and then to customize. That's gonna bring us to this page here. I've actually temporarily set mine as the home page. You don't need to do this. I've done it so you can see what's going on with the coding. And if we go down to the bottom here, we've got the additional CSS panel. There's the code I wrote. Let's get rid of this so it doesn't confuse us. And we'll move that underlying code out of the way. Okay, first thing we want to do is give this a title. And to create a title, it's forward slash star star forward slash. Inside the stars, between the two stars there, you can write your title or any notes you want. It won't be read as code. So I'm just going to say, text grow. Always a good idea to give it a title that way if anybody else is editing if you write a lot of CSS it makes it a lot easier to find. Okay what do we want to do? Well we gave this class of G text for grow text. All classes have a dot or a period in front so it's dot and then the class name G text. And what do we want to do with it? Well, let's open and close some curly brackets here and we want to create an animation. And don't forget, anybody that wants to, this code's down below if you just want to copy and paste it. So we want to give it an animation, colon, and we want to give our animation a new, a unique name. So let's say it, text grow, TGRO, whatever, whatever you want to call yours. Again, it needs to be unique. Now I'm gonna make mine take 20 seconds to cycle around this. If you wanna make yours quicker, give it a smaller value, or obviously slower, a larger value. I want it to be infinite so it keeps going. If you just want yours to do go one time and once it's at full width, stop. Don't make it infinite, just leave this bit off. I'm gonna make it linear so it's a little bit smoother. Great. So now I need to create this animation called Tigro. So we'll drop down a couple more. And we'll say at keyframes, that's what we're using to build this today. And then the name that we gave it, which was Tigro. Now we can open and close some curly brackets and start giving it the animation that we want. So let's have a think about this. At 0%, in other words, when the page loads, or second one of our 20 second, 0%, we'll open some more curly brackets. I want it to be kind of invisible, so I'm gonna take the opacity down, and I want it to be really small, perhaps 10% of its width. So I'm gonna say width, carry on, 10%, and like I say, I want the opacity down. And as you can see, it's actually started animating already as soon as I've done that. So I'm gonna say, when we start, I don't wanna see it. So I'm gonna say opacity, zero. Great, now I'm gonna copy this probably 10 times. Obviously, the more times you do it, the smoother the actual effect will be. So I'm gonna copy it one time for a start. Control C to copy. I'm going to drop down one, I'm going to paste it in below. I'm going to get rid of the opacity. I don't need that once we've got it in there. Now I'm going to copy this again, and I'm going to make 10 of them. Control C, Control V to paste. So we got 0%, 20%, or 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So let's have a look. 10%. I'm going to say width 30%, 20%, say width 50%, 30%, let's make it say width 80%, and you can adjust yours how you want to what visually works for you, 40%, I'm going to have it up to 100% there. 
And I'm going to do 100% for sort of 50, 60, 70. 50, 60, 70. That way it'll actually stay there for a little bit and give them a chance to read it. 50, 60, 70. Let's make these all 100. Then at 80% we can start rolling it back. I'll say 50%. And like I say, play with these. Make the animation that you want to happen. 90%, let's make that perhaps 30. Or even 20 would do, I suppose. And then at 100%, let's take it all the way down to maybe 1%, so it'll almost disappear. And we can actually make it totally disappear by putting that opacity zero on the end again. But you may have noticed it's completely disappeared. So what we're going to do, it thinks it's starting at opacity zero and ending at opacity zero, so we can't see anything there. What we can do is simply add 30% or wherever we want it to fade in opacity one, which is fully visible. And as you can see, it's starting to sort of fade and grow in. Now it'll stop there for a little while, I'll give you a chance to read it. Still fading out a bit there. Let's take this, make sure we can see it all the way as much as we want. So I'm going to grab that opacity one and let's make sure that perhaps it's still at full opacity at 50% down here. So I'm going to add it to our, my 80% there. And that should be a lot better. Yeah, we can see it a lot better. It's starting to fade out there, which is great, and disappear. And then it's fading back in and reappearing. Like I say, that's going to get people's attention really quickly. So let's publish our changes here. And we can go back to our regular page. Refresh, and our little animation should start there. And there it is. As you can see, it started to animate in and grow. That text is feeding in. It'll stay there so we can read it. And then it's going to shrink back out. And don't forget, guys, if you've got any questions, please put them below the video. I'm happy to make video demonstrations if I can for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget that code is down below. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe and share. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.